Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. So, <clears throat> I have my canvas and my paints ready. I'm just going to do this little lines so I know to put the canvas back into frame. Okay, so I'm going to do a sandwich pour. So I really do like these and um, I think they turn out quite well. So what I have done is I'm going to try and do one a little bit darker this time because there's a lot of white which does lighten things up. So I have turquoise, black and purple. So purple and turquoise always look good together. But I wanted some darker colour without it being a dark blue or another purple. And um, I didn't really want to add different tones into it. I wanted it to be these tones with the white. So these are the colours I've picked and they are, when I say, okay, so they're 35 grams paint, 35 grams pouring medium. The only difference is I actually um, did 40 grams paint and 30 grams paint for the turquoise because it is so much thinner. Um, it's, it's a little bit frustrating that the turquoise is always thinner because um, I have to adjust it to everything else but that's just how how it is so um, I do find turquoise is thinner with most brands not every brand but most so these are Montmartre paints and I have just added three drops of silicon oil which is Helmar silicon oil into these three colors which are in the sandwich part of the pour I've given them a decent little stir there. I like to stir my silicon in well. I don't like it to be sitting on top. Um, and I left these paints to sit for about an hour. So I added probably three drops of water just before I started um, recording. Just because they thickened up a little bit. It's quite warm. And I have two cups of white which are 75 grams paint and 90 grams pouring medium. So they're a little bit thinner, but not a lot. Now, my pouring medium is, where did I put it? Over here. So my pouring medium is Elmer's Glue All, 65 grams, sorry, 65% glue, 35% water. So I have the same pouring medium in all of them, and that's about it. It's going to be a four cup um, flip cup. So, there we go. So that will give me kind of a, a quite an even spread across the canvas. So, ultimately now, all I gotta do is pour the paints in. So we're gonna use one whole cup of white So I try and keep these even, so by putting a quarter in each. It doesn't have to be exactly a quarter, but you don't want one over full and one hardly empty. You kind of want a nice even spread of paint across all four cups. There we go. So they're relatively even. I think that is a tiny bit lower than that, but tiny bit isn't going to make a difference. Now, with these colours, I, I can, I'm torn between what I want to have next to the white. So I wanted to go dark, light, dark, and then white again, but it is going to mean that the black is going to be next to the white. But I suppose it won't be so bad. It just means I will get grey. So, but what I am going to do is, so I just want to put in a bit of this one. And a bit of that one. So I've just put a quarter of this cup into those two. I'm going to do 
instead of doing all four purple, I'm going to do those two purple and these two black. Just so I'm mixing it up slightly. And then when I do the purple layer, I'm going to do the purple on these two and the black on those two after I've done the turquoise. Just so then it gives me a little bit more assortment when I flip them over. So now the turquoise is going in the middle. Of all four. So purple and turquoise always look really good together. And black and turquoise should look good as well. Now these paints are thick, they're thick for a reason, means I don't get too many um, unusual looking cells, I want them to stay cell shaped. So this cup was the one that I had purple, um, I mean black at the bottom as the first layer, so then I'm going to do purple as the second layer. So all cups will add black, purple and turquoise. I've just mixed up the order on two of them. So that way there just means that the colour will come out in a different order. I'm trying to layer it as much as possible without it sinking down into the other colours. Doesn't always go as planned, but we do our best. Now I have the second white and we're just going to do a top layer of this. So a quarter of this white in each cup. This one needs a little bit more. So ultimately, you just kind of want all four cups to be relatively even by the end. Awesome. Just getting all these out of the way. Okay, now. So they're all even, so I want to put that last, that second last. And now I'm just going to flip these over. Excellent. Now put some gloves on. And we're just going to leave that to settle down for a little bit. So ultimately, there's white. At the, so the reason they call this a sandwich pour is because it has white or a colour, whatever whatever it is. You've got the same at the top and the bottom. And then all your, 
all your, your other colors are mixed in the middle. So it's kind of like my purple, turquoise and black is sandwiched between two whites. Um, that's really what a sandwich pour is, is you're just sandwiching the color between another color. So you can do this, if you want to do the bottom and the top turquoise, then you can. Um, and it'll still be a sandwich pour because you're sandwiching the other colors between that color. The only thing I have done here is I've got, in between the two whites, I've got black, turquoise, purple. And this one I've got purple, turquoise, black. I've just switched the order so then when I flip them, I hopefully get a slightly different pattern so it's not all identical. Just to see what difference I get. Um, if you don't experiment and have fun, you're, you're not going to learn how things work. And yeah, it's just the way that you do different things. So these um, are going to be thick. So there's probably going to be leftover paint in the cup. Not a lot I can do about that. Just do your best. So let's start from this side, I reckon. Should I? No, I, uh, yeah, I'll start here. Okay. So I'm going to flip. All that paint came out of that one spot. That's the one thing when you do use thick paints. Just putting a bit on this edge. Definitely getting grey. So the black and the white are mixing, which are giving me a grey. And I'm also getting cells popping up already. It's the black that, is, that does that. This black I'm not as happy about. But, oh well. Gives me these um, fractal, fractal cells. The cells don't come out as a proper circle. They kind of get fractals in them. So before I lose too much paint, I am going to start tilting because I can see it's going to go over the edge a little bit. So I'm going to come down this way. The middle usually does move quicker because more paint has settled there. to move a little bit better. One corner doesn't want to move as good. So I'm going to go over this edge over here, over and come back. And now I'm bringing it over this side to the side I got my wiggly thumb. And I've got to try and get this. So it's just not moving as quickly as the others. So we want to go over the corner. Okay, excellent. It went over. I'm going to touch up that corner slightly because there wasn't any paint at the bottom half of it. Now I'm going to bring the paint back up. Just going side to side, trying to get the paint to move evenly. And it looks like it wants to go over this corner first, so let's make it go over that corner first. There we go, over that corner and come back. And then I'm going to go up. Over that corner. I'm gonna Take a little bit off that way to even these lines up. Okay, now come back. Need a little bit of paint in that bottom of that corner. That corner's fine. So now I'm just wiggling my paint back down to the center. All right. Now I can't see my lines that I drew. There's one. They got covered by paint. Okay, so that's the initial pour and tilt. 
just checking my sides to make sure there is paint on it and there is and before I get my gloves off I'm just gonna run my finger underneath and just take off those extra drips okay I'm gonna get my gloves off Now there's one thing I can see right now that I want to get rid of first of all. There is a glob of paint right here. Broken in half. There we go. You want to get them off sooner rather than later because they will cause issues. Let me see. So when you look at it from a, an angle, you can usually see them sticking up quite raised. I've got a feeling there's one right here. Did I get it? No. Okay, I'm not going to dig into it too much because I'm not going to mess it up. Sometimes you... Just have to say that's it. So now we're going to get the torch out. Oh, I put that in the paint. Okay. So I'm going to keep my blow torch on a medium flame, and I'm just doing this from a little bit of a height. One, it's going to pop some bubbles. And two, it's going to bring up some cells, but keep it up high. So now I can get a tiny little bit closer, see if I can bring up any cells. So there's a few starting to appear. So always go a little bit nice and easy. And there might be some spots that you don't get cells come up. When you do a sandwich pour, you've only got silicon. I'll turn that off. When you do a sandwich pour, you've only got silicon in the three middle colors. So if there's none of that middle color underneath, then you won't get a cell pop up. So keep that in mind. So the cells that I have got from the torch um, are very, very small. They've stayed really tiny. But that's kind of cool. Gives you a really different contrast to the ones that have come up um, earlier on. 
So the ones that come up earlier on are these bigger ones and they go a little bit out of shape from when you're tilting it back and forth. But then as you can see like through here, I've got lots of little cells that have popped up in all different parts and they're all doing quite different things. So over here I've got a lot of greys but then near the edges I've got um, turquoise and purples. Over here I've got purples down through there, turquoise here, purple and turquoise there with just turquoise there. And then over here in this grey patch there's a lot of, there's a few turquoise and some blacks. And then down here lots of purples. So it's kind of given me that assortment. <clears throat> so I'm happy. Um, I have got like the what I would call divider lines which is like this one this one and this one from where the different cups are so that's because I purposely want to have four cups if you want those divider lines in different spots use less cups more cups or you could even use one giant cup right in the middle um, as a flip cup and try to spread it out that way which I might even try one day use a really big cup put it there and tilt it down that way and then just spread it from there so I get no divider lines whatsoever. But um, I'm, I'm pleased with this. I like the kind of grey that has come through and the turquoise and the purple suit, though, suit that grey and the black quite well. So black, white, there's virtually black, white, turquoise and purple but there's a mixture of lighter purples and greys because the white has altered those colours a bit which is precisely what I want. Yeah, so these cells aren't going to grow too much more now, which is fine. I, I touched that edge there slightly with my palette knife. I'm just going to scrape the bottom with an actual palette knife now because there's more drips that have appeared. Again, don't bring your palette knife over the top of the canvas. Always run it around the edge, the side, when you're moving it. Now I've got to move these cups. There we go. So where I had touched the side with the palette knife, I just put some of the paint that I scraped onto that part and it will just fall down. So I kind of just push it on and then just let it run itself down. And I'm getting everything in the paint today. So ultimately, this is it. This is the finished artwork. It probably won't change much. The paints are very thick. So um, they won't alter a lot. If you want cells to be a bit different, then make them a bit thinner. Um, I like how I get the assortment of larger and smaller cells. I probably wouldn't have minded a few more mediums. Um, but overall, I'm, I'm actually quite pleased. Colours um, a lot more. It is come out that darker tone. But it's not dark, dark. So the grey is actually quite a complementary colour to the whole thing. So I'm going to bring you down for a close-up. Okay, and there we go. So it's not, um, I don't know, it's different. It's kind of turned out quite different again to some of the other sandwich pours that I do. So depending on the colour, you will actually get different reactions. The black, I'm not 100% keen on this black anymore. Um, Actually, both both of the brands that I used to use, the Araldo Di Polo and the Montmartre Black, I'm actually a little bit unimpressed with how they've been behaving. But let's come down. I'll turn the camera around. And look at some of these really cool cells. Like these little ones. They're tiny, but they're gorgeous. And then you come up to this end, and they're more in the turquoise tone. Then we've got black cells and turquoise with white rings.
I'm going to rotate the camera again. Down here we've got some black cells. We've also got white and purple. And as we go up, we've got a whole ring of purple ones. And then they're going to morph into turquoise. It's not giving me the best lighting. And then these are the bigger cells that came up earlier on. And look at all these kind of grey white cells. And then as we come down, we're going to get some turquoise and purples. So these ones down here have got turquoise in them, but they're kind of like a grey turquoise. But yeah, interesting. So how you get different effects using different paints and also putting them in a different order. So you can actually see this one here is more black, this one here is more purple, and then this one here has got probably more purple um, at this end, but black at that end. And this one's actually come out quite grey with bits of colour over that end. So rotating the order that you do the paints will change things again. So that's a bit of fun. So, ultimately, this is uh, finished artwork. I hope you guys liked it. So, let me know what you think. So, comment, like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you soon for another pour. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.